Hey, Matt 31, I had a question coming out of section 5.6, number 45, and here we were asked to find all sorts of traits for our function. So I'm just going to start listing them here. Um, I'm going to find the domain. It wasn't explicitly asked for, but you should, oops, you should always find the domain of a function before you get going. Um, we'll find some x-intercepts. Let's find a y-intercept. We want to find any vertical asymptotes that may happen, and I'll look at end behavior which will either be a slant or a horizontal asymptote. And then I'll go ahead and I'll actually graph it. So if we look at our function, we're starting off with a rational function. And again, I've said this many times, there's always three domain issues that we have to address or be on the lookout for, right? And that's when we have fractions, radicals, or logarithms. And for this chapter, you're not going to run into a radical or a logarithm, but we are dealing with rational functions, so you're always going to have to deal with that fraction. So I need to look at, hey, when is my denominator equal to zero? So when I start to set my denominator equal to zero, I get these two values, right? I'm going to get x equaling one and negative one. So I need to boot those out of my domain, and that's what you see me doing here, right? It's all real numbers. That's the symbol for all real numbers, except x equaling plus or minus 1. But if I want to write it up in interval notation, this is how we do it. So my domain, I go from negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 1, 1 to infinity. Okay, great. Now, in terms of do these two values become vertical asymptotes or holes, we're going to have that combo in, in, well, let's have it now. So anytime you have a domain issue, these numbers will either be VAs, or holes. All right, and I'll put a little question mark. So the distinguisher here is it depends which part of your fraction these two numbers zero out. So for a VA, right, that happens when you zero out zero, of x value, I'll say x value, zeros out only the denominator. And you have a hole when you have an x value that zeroes out both the numerator and the denominator at the same time. So zeroes out both numerator and denominator at the same time. Denominator, got it. At the same time. Okay, so that's why you see me going ahead and factoring all of this stuff up here. So when I factored my rational function, the numerator was x plus 3, x minus 1, and we had x plus 1, x minus 1. So if we take a look at it, let me erase my little marks here. I hope you can see that we had a factor that was common to the numerator, common to the denominator. That is going to be a hole. Okay, So I'm going to have a hole there, but if you look, let me change highlighter colors here, x plus 1 was only in the denominator, right? So when it's only in the denominator, that's going to be the vertical asymptote. So maybe it would help if I just color coded it over here instead. Let me let me go ahead and erase this. And I'm going to say that's going to be the vertical asymptote, right? So we had x plus 1 was only in the denominator. And then we had x minus 1 was in both the numerator and denominator. So at this point, I know I have a vertical asymptote at x equaling negative 1. And I would say x equaling negative 1 because if I set x plus 1 to 0, I'm going to get x equaling negative 1. All right, so there's my VA work. Now for the whole, it's a little bit more intense. So for my whole, let me actually add that to my traits. I have a whole at an x value of 1. And again, I say an x value of 1 because that's what would zero out this factor. Now I'm going to erase my VA work here. How do you find the y value to your whole, well, take a look at whatever was left of your function after you canceled that factor that was common to the numerator and denominator and plug one in. So if I plug one in, and again, I want to reiterate, I'm plugging one in because that was the x-coordinate. Actually, let me color code it the right way. Oops. I never know what to do when that happens, that little bubble popping up. Okay, so let me go ahead and color code this and hope this just does what I want. Nope, I don't know how to get that bubble to disappear. <laughs> All right, so I want to put here, I'm going to put x plus 1, or I'm sorry, I'm going to have an x coordinate of 1 because that was the x coordinate that, that corresponded to that factor. So let me regroup myself. So if I look at the yellow highlighted factor, x minus 1, 
is zero at x equaling one. Great, so that's where I get the x coordinate. Now, if I wanna find the y coordinate, plug one into whatever was left over. So what I mean by that is instead of x plus three, I'm gonna do one plus three over one plus one. That would be four over two, which would be two, and that is gonna be the y coordinate of my hole. Okay, whew, and we haven't even gotten to the intercepts yet. Okay, so let me let me go ahead and, and push this down a little bit, but actually let me copy over my function just so I have it. So a of x is basically, Okay, it is x squared plus 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 1, and it's basically behaving like x plus 3 over x plus 1 other than that whole. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try and figure out, we'll go intercepts. So if I want the y-intercept, that's usually the easier one. I'll do a of 0. Now I'm just going to use the reduced version of this. So that would be 0 plus 3 over 0 plus 1. That would be 3. So I've got my y-intercept at 0, 3. If I want my x-intercept, those are factors that are only in the numerator. So let me do a different color here. If I look at x plus 3, that's only in the numerator. When that zeroes out, that would be at the x-intercept of negative 3, 0. All right, last but not least, we're looking at n behavior. So let me get yet another highlighter color. If I look at n behavior, I have a squared term over a squared term. When the degree in the numerator is equal, to the degree in the denominator. I'm gonna squeeze this in here. The degree in the denominator is equal to the degree in the numerator. That's when you have a horizontal asymptote, right? So I'll put, I have a horizontal asymptote, and the equation of that will be the coefficients in front of these terms, which are secretly one and one. One over one is one. All right, so I know that's a lot, but there is our function. So we're gonna take all of this information. In fact, I'm not gonna be able to memorize it, so let me just copy it over here. Come on, bud. Mm, there, here we go. Let me copy that and move it down to where I was going to graph it. Let me scooch this down. All right, let me paste this here so we can see what was happening. Okay, so as I look through this, let me get a different check mark. All right, x intercept negative 3, 0. I can see it right here. x intercept negative 3, 0. y intercept 0, 3. You see it right here. y intercept 0, 3. Vertical asymptote, x equals negative 1. Well, here is my vertical asymptote. Oops, there that thing is again. Vertical asymptote, right? All right, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. I can see that also right here, right? Horizontal asymptote. Oops, let me go ahead and erase this and just write ha. And then I had the hole at 1, 2. Well, there is the hole, right, at 1, comma 2. Now, the only thing that's missing from this, if I wanted to add to my traits and just to practice it, we will, it would be the range. So the range, you can see I have a down arrow, so I'm starting at negative infinity. I follow this all the way up to a y value of 1. And then I start over here on the other side of 1. But I got to remember I have a hole here, so I'm going to go from 1 to 2. And then I'm going to go from 2 all the way up to infinity. All right, that one's an intense one. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.